you humans took my home away from me. Now I shall destroy yours. In this video we will do a quick breakdown for both characters from this project. Later we will take a look at the scenes I created for the still frames, we will talk about lighting, rendering, and finally about the animation I did for the intro. Hello everyone, I hope you enjoyed this short animation. As this is the first time on the CG Boost channel, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Juan Hernandez and I am a 3D character artist. I focus mainly on stylized art but I also enjoy working on realistic stuff. On screen, you can see some of the stuff I create in Blender. This video is a general introduction to one of my latest creations. I will show you my personal workflow for creating such projects and some tips and tricks to work efficiently as an artist. Before starting, I also wanted to let you know that both characters will be available for free at cgboost.com resources, where you can also gain access to our free Blender introduction course and our Blender shortcut PDF. You can sign up for free and only an email is required. So the first thing I did before going into Blender was making a concept. As you can see, it doesn't have any colors, it's not very polished, but at least I have a clear idea of what I wanted to create. Originally, I wanted to make a stylized robot and then I thought it would be fun if a character would be controlling the robot from the inside. So eventually I came up with the idea of the evil sloth. Regardless if you know how to draw well or not, making a concept is a very effective way of trying out many ideas in a short amount of time. And believe me, some of the things I do are super rough, but it's always very helpful. So I encourage you to always put something on paper before going into Blender. To create the robot, I started by using simple geometry to block the shape and to make sure that the proportions are correct. I even made a simple rig to make sure that he's able to touch the floor and I could match the model to the concept. You can also disconnect the bones and use the rig to change the size of objects until you are happy with the proportions. I use any technique to develop the design. I use subdiv modeling for simple objects and booleans or even sculpting for complicated parts. At this point, I do not care much about topology since I focus on the design look for inspiration online to come up with different ideas for the parts and joints. I also had to treat this robot as a character and an environment at the same time. So when working on interior, constantly check all the angles to make sure that it looks great. Once I am happy with the design, it is time to clean up the geometry by retopologizing what's necessary. I want to have clean topology, which is easier to work with, less demanding on resources and looks well with subdivisions. It is also a good time to add small details and make the model more complex and good looking. One big advantage of using subdivisions, you can use the simplify option to globally turn it off. This is very helpful if your file is laggy and you need better response from the viewport. One personal tip is to keep subdivision levels as low as possible. There is almost no benefit from it and it only slows down your computer. I even turn it off when I'm working in edit mode. I mention this because I see a lot of artists using lots of subdivisions when there's no benefit from it. Another tip when working on hard surface projects is to use the solidify modifier together with the bevel modifier and custom bevel weight. In this way, we can control the sharpness of edges created by the solidify modifier only and make sure it looks good in subdivisions. The arm of the robot is a very important feature and it's the place where the weapons are hidden. Making this kind of weapons can be a little tricky, so what I did was work only on the shell. Later, when I had the rig, I used it to open the shell and then put all the models in place. Once I was happy with the result, I could attach the new models to the rig and put everything back into the hand. You can also save the open version and the closed version in your pose library, so you don't have to be doing it manually every time. For the robot, I created my own rig. I worked mainly on one half the entire time, which made the whole process easier. So once everything was set, I mirrored the rig, including all the constraints 
and functions I needed. I did not parent any geometry directly to bones. Instead, I used vertex groups to attach the mesh to the rig. One nice advantage of this is that the mirror modifier also mirrors vertex groups, so by adding an extra vertex group with the correct convention, you can control each side individually. I also created a custom controller to open and close the weapon, and I did that by using actions. That means I could make a short animation of the weapon opening, and connect that animation to a bone to control the timing. Since I'm still using all my mirror modifiers, I could do all the UV work only on one half of the robot. I used the UV offset option to move all the UV islands to different tiles, and then flipped it so the direction is correct. You can use any method for texturing. In this case, I use Substance Painter, which gives me a lot of freedom and faster results. To create the slot, I started in a similar way to the robot by putting together any geometry to get the main shape of the character. Afterwards, I take the model into sculpting to refine the shapes. I use dynamic topology, so I do not have to deal with poly count. I keep detail size as low as possible, so that the geometry is easier to handle and the shapes are smooth. Creatures with fur can be a little tricky, since their look can drastically change when adding fur. One thing you can do is sculpt a version with fur and later shave him off. Other is to make a paint over and get a rough idea of the final result. This is not super accurate, but at least it would let you know if you are going into the right direction. Once I was happy with the result, I could move into retopology. I lock all the main loops of the face and the arms and connect the rest of the areas. I can also finish the mouth by adding the inside area, making the teeth, the gums and the tongue. One little tip when working on the inside part of a mouth is to make a shape key of the mouth open and make sure that the teeth and tongue fit well. The texturing work of the sloth is actually quite simple, since most of the body is covered with fur. All I had to do is paint the color areas that will drive the color of the fur. The only exception is the mouth, where the lips are dark but the fur is light. In that case, you can use a different fur material. To create the fur, I use Blender's particle system. The first layer I add is shirt fur with interpolated children, which covers most part of the body. After that, I create the main particle setting, which I use for the long fur. This is still divided into different layers to keep my work organized. Arms, legs, body and head are different particle systems, using the same settings. I looked at real life reference to create the sloth fur, but I did make a slight change and made the fur more puffy, to make him look more cute. For the fur material, I used Blender's principal hair shader, and I connect the body texture to drive the color of the fur. Then I play around with the roughness to make the fur look dry and puffy. For the rig, I actually used Auto Rig Pro. I wanted to experiment rigging a non-human character with this add-on, so I decided to give it a go. It comes with some pre-made limbs ready to use and a lot of automatic functions, such as IK controls, eyelid movement, and controls for the face which I refined using simple shape keys. I was aware I was not planning any extreme poses or expressions, so I didn't have to make it perfect. I created two main scenes using these characters. One of them is focused on the sloth, and the other one is focused on the robot in a different environment. For these renders, I used a wide format to get a more cinematic look. The first scene takes place inside of the robot, so I didn't have to model anything new. All I had to do was bring the slot and bring him in the right position, and then work mainly on the lighting. Let's do a quick breakdown of all the lights in the first scene. As you can see, some of the items inside of the robot already produce light, but it's very subtle and it does not change much of the environment. First we have a area light, which comes from the side and behind the character. You can use blue or green colors to make the environment more artificial and technological. Then we have another area light coming from behind the character. This makes the silhouette of the character pop. In this case I use white color to get more color variation. Then I use a spotlight on the face of the character. This also makes some nice shadows around the eyes, which make the character look evil. I use another spotlight to bring some red colors to the environment. Red also works nicely in combination with the blue and gives the viewer more information about the environment outside of the frame. In this case, it could be fire or some kind of explosion. Thanks to this spotlight, I also get highlights around the eyes, 
which gives the character a lot of life. And lastly, I use an Ishita Sky Texture with low strength to get rid of any extreme black values. One last step for this render was to do some simple compositing. It doesn't matter how good looking your render is, it's always going to look better with compositing. You can do it right away in Blender or any different software of your choice. In this case, I did it in Photoshop. The second scene is located in the middle of a city street. As always, I started by blocking out each building and figuring out the camera composition. Then I could start working on each building individually and creating a clean version of the street before working on the destruction. To work more efficiently, I used a lot of collection instances. That means I could create a different scene with each individual asset that I will use to scatter around the city. This will also save you a lot of memory and it's gonna make the set dressing process easier. To create the destruction, I used the particle system to scatter around bricks and debris along the street. I used different layers for different sizes and I used weight painting to paint the position of the debris. To create the hole on the wall, I actually took the texture wall into sculpting mode and used the trim tool to cut the bricks following the texture. I used the same technique on corners and edges of buildings to create damage. I used a sky texture to light up most of the scene and some area lights and blocking planes to focus the light on the robot. At last, we will take a look at the animation I created for the introduction. This animation was rendered completely in Eevee at 4K resolution and is composed of 5 shots in total with 672 frames. In the first shot, I kept the lighting from the top to make the character look mysterious. I also made a subtle dolly zoom effect with the camera to make the shot more creepy. To synchronize the lips with the audio, I first animated the jaw movement to make sure the timing is right, and later I animated the lips. In the second shot, we can see the slot on his way to press the button. In this scene, I only animated the hand going across the shot. To make the hand less stiff, I added a noise modifier to the IK control of the hand to get subtle moves and make it more natural. The third and fourth shot are actually in the same scene. I just play around with depth of field, lights and camera movement. I also played around with sound effects to connect the audio with the visuals. And then we have the fifth shot when we show the character for the first time. In here I slowly reveal the character by putting lights on the side and leaving the front light until the end. Thanks everyone for watching. If you have any questions about the project or anything related to Blender, please write it down in the comments to let me know so I can prepare new videos in the future. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Don't forget you can download both characters at cgboost.com resources. I hope you found this video useful and see you next time.